Welcome back to another non-judgmental. Uh, sitting around hanging uh, hanging out with the guys this week. We got Leo, Nick, and my buddy Scott here. And of course the angry Gordon's always coming back. Having some drinks and having a good time this week talking about metal. New Wage War album came out. Angry, you had an opinion on that. Why don't you go ahead and give it to us right off the start? Uh, well, I checked out that new song. Not so sure how, uh, how I feel about that. Um, I believe you're talking about looking for an album to buy. And, uh, I, I, I might go buy that album this week. But what you looking for an album to buy this uh, week? Something new? Yeah, I was thinking about checking out that Wage War, but like I said, I'm not really a fan of the new song. Uh, uh, Nick put it up online. I, I don't really know how I feel about that. That was that was Dead Weight. That's not actually the uh, the title track or maybe the best track on it. I thought that was my favorite from it, but I think Witness. What was it that drew you away from that song? I, I think that I'm growing out of the softer vocals. All of my metal here lately, I, I just say over the past year, has been nothing but the growls and screaming, and I, I just can't get enough of it. I, it's glorious mouth. Uh, the closest... The closest I've got to like the clean vocals here lately is that new, new Trivium song. Oh my god, man! We got to talk about the new Trivium song. Like uh, incredible. I shared that on our page, like I think like maybe ten minutes after it it was released online. I just happened to be luckily scrolling through and saw that they had, uh, had just put it up not not a few minutes prior. It's a fan fucking tastic. I mean, right I'll always have respect for Trivium though. I mean, I. I Roadrunner United soundtrack. Oh yeah, Roadrunner United. He was one of the Ooh. team leaders on it. I know, we were talking about Ascendancy and whatnot. You got to play with, uh, with old, what, Mike Smith from Suffocation. Got to do a song with King Diamond. King Diamond, I thought he was King Diamond. Diamond. King Diamond. Diamond. El Nino, I mean, good stuff. Yeah, like, I, I'll, I'll always have respect for Trivia. Yeah, I, I definitely do, man. What, what, this, what is this we're talking about? Oh the Roadrunner God. United album. I know you've heard it. It came out multiple times, too. Have you not heard that no. album? Roadrunner United. I... I know about it, but I, I don't think I ever... Liked it's 56 different members from 46 different metal bands of Roadrunner United record label, right? They all got together, what is it, 16 tracks? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, six, yeah, it's like 16, I think, tracks where, where they just take all the musicians. They had like four team leaders, which was uh, Matt Hafey, um, uh, was it Dino... From uh, Fear yeah, Factory. Yeah, yeah, I believe Rob Flynn, I think, um, was one of them. Kanye from Machine Head. Robert Rob Robert Flynn, Robert. was he one? Well, I know he was on. I know that the opening track is him and Howard Jones. Yeah. And I yeah. thought, I'm pretty sure I yeah, thought it was. Yeah, he, he might have been on that one. And then, uh, and then Joey Jordanson Joey from Jordan, uh, yeah. Slipknot. But yeah, they broke them down and they, they would just mix these musicians together and they would make these metal songs that would take aspects from each of the different artists' bands and write a completely original song, record that shit, and just go with it, man. It was, it was fucking intense. The yeah. fact that you haven't heard that is a big wet fart on your fucking metal nice credit, shit. man. That's insane. I feel like I have. Metal homework this week. I feel like I have. It's metal, definitely metal, metal homework, homework this week. Like, like, seriously, if you get a chance, go I'm on YouTube like, and watch the fucking video on the recording of it. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. Like, get into that behind shit. Behind-the-scenes video of these guys creating this masterpiece. And I know, like, the guitarist from Annihilator. Oh, God. On the first track. Solo, dude, look at that, dude. He is so fucking blitz when he's doing it. But, like, <laughs> I felt the same way he did while he's sitting there playing it while I'm just listening <laughs> to it. Almost, it's, if you can't really recall that, I guarantee, like, you haven't really heard it correctly. I well, I guarantee it's on YouTube, yeah. right? The yeah. video for it? Definitely. I'm uh, still out of the loop here. Well, yeah, you, you need to be, and it's like, I mean... Oh that was kind of life-changing, man, because I already knew some bands that were on there, and I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. Let me we're, check it out. We're and trying it showed me so many other bands that I hadn't heard of, Can and I got to get a feeling of, like, where they were, and it, it was crazy. It was one of those things that taught you to be non-judgmental in the first place, and you absolutely just... I, I, I'm fat. Look, we got to quit talking about this, because I'm feeling sick to the belly here. Wage Back to war. the Wage War that came out <laughs> this week. Uh, August 4th was its release date. Um, man, i got to say, so far, I've really enjoyed that album. Uh, Scott here, you, you were uh, telling me about it, man. Um, yeah, it's really good. I, I really like it. And yeah, yeah. They're one of those bands that just kind of, I don't know, really kind of re introduced me to like metalcore again because I kind of faded out of that and right. 
they came around and they're just so heavy and they're so melodic at the same time they do it so it didn't seem as heavy as the first album though, in my opinion just because it seemed like they really focused on that high pitched singer in every single song on this album I definitely think that they they leaned into that more but I mean like I, I feel like it's one of those things that if it's your strength build, build on to it strengths. he might have cut his man bun off but I seen them uh, in May at that festival dude and they were tearing it up and he, he does they don't sound bad live not know. at all even even with the uh, the, the high pitched shrill as you guys were calling it, I, I personally like a lot of melody in my metal. Like I'm absolutely cool with it, man. Like I love the you know throw down this hardcore, deep guttural, death dastardly son of a bitch sound you can possibly get. In the same respect, though, man, like if you can mix those two things together and actually pull off a sound that's that, that's not only cohesive but but works toward your your strength as a musician, like yeah, hell yeah, go for it, man. Um. I absolutely think that it's uh, that so far I, I listened to maybe the first seven tracks off of it. Uh, unfortunately, with work, I wasn't able to get to all of it. But I will say, like, I'm impressed. You mentioned Witness, man. Yeah. I think so far that's the one that really like, like that's the actual single yeah. off the album. But oh, yeah, was it? That's what I'm saying. Dude. It stuck out to me earlier that like the second track on it. Did Gordon hear Witness, or did he hear just the one that I posted? That was yeah. Have you heard any more of it, Angry, or are you just being judgmental? Uh, no, like I said, that's why I brought up Trivium. Uh, I, I was getting into that Wage War pretty heavy, and then uh, Trivium just stole the spotlight. They just th that new song just blows me away, man. I don't know if you guys have kept up with Trivium over the past couple of years, but uh, I have, yeah. Their their past two albums, I guess Matt Heppy had something had been wrong with his voice on tour or something. I he like that last one. A lot of the scream. Silence in the Snow. Yeah, he, he's he's like, a, I liked it. He, he, he's the best metal singer out there, in my opinion. That's a, in my opinion. That's a heavy statement. That that, that's, that's, that's pretty heavy statement. statement. Have you heard them cover Master of Puppets by Metallica? That yes. and, and R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion. I have not heard that. Guys. Both of them are fan-fucking-tastic. <laughs> The Trivium is one of the strongest metal acts out there right now. We won't that, disagree. That heavy, I won't it's, disagree. A, it's a beast. And for them, I was just reading some of the comments on that video. Right. And it's, you know, people were talking about how everybody had complained about the past two albums. So Trivium put this out and they did this just to take everyone's heads. You know, and that's, that's how you feel about Trivium. Is, I don't know if you guys have listened to them since their first album, but their first album, every song you listened to, it felt like they were taking your head. You know, it was I felt that way about their first album. two records. Like uh, they they had some melody in them, but for the most part, it was a lot more aggressive. But I think that's a trend you see with a lot of uh, uh, groups nowadays. Is like you know, the younger they are, they're going to have a lot more of that angst and aggression that powers the music. And as they get older, you start to see them, you know, appreciate the the craftsmanship of what 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 they're doing. And, and uh, you, you start to see the skill come out a little bit more in the songwriting. And, and, and you can definitely tell that these people are learning, like, the difference, um, you know, in, in, in what it is. I to think make you just can't yell forever. forever. I don't think that's it at all, man, because, like, I mean, honestly, as much as I don't like Stone Sour very much, Judd Metal, I will say that, like, I was listening to one of the new songs, and Corey screams on this sound just as decent as they did back in Iowa or the third or first album. They, and they do, but the, the, that, they might not be as frequent. That, that brings me to another question real quick to interject, not to interrupt too long, but no, is please. Stone Sour Metal? Oh, Lord. No. Oh, oh we were talking Leo. about this. Hold on. Leo said we, we've we've been, been, you whether or not right. it's metal, we, modern rock, or gen. All right, we got to it before we get to a discussion, because we're going to hear what Scott has to say about uh, the Summer Slaughter Tour, something all of us are absolutely fucking jealous. We did not get to go to attend, but he did. Uh, I gotta have this conversation. You brought this up to me last night. Yeah, I de we, yeah. Pause what we're doing. APC. Le like the discussion between is this metal? Like your thoughts. I gotta know. What APC? No, just he was what talking about this. He said that you guys were having a thing. Like, what's the difference between hard rock? Yeah, yeah and and that, that, you know, that, there's there's quite a few bands out there that you know definitely have metal ties. And maybe even metal influences, but it's when you get right down to it. Yeah, I'm wearing like, a Weezer shirt right now. Yeah, I know. I love fucking metal. I, I love mean, death metal. Uh, what they are at times, they, they they're heavy, but not metal. 
Not metal. No, not I'm metal. not going to tell you that Weezer is metal. Ever. You yeah. always got it because I was saying half pipe is pretty fucking happy. I mean, it, some people could be like, well, <laughs> they use a distortion on their guitar pedal. And mm-hmm. they'd be like, shut the fuck up. You're not going to add anything to my <laughs> shut day. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. That's it. You I know, think this but, is metal. Shut the fuck up. If somebody says something's metal and it's not metal, that's your automatic response. It should be, shut the fuck up. Don't say anything or I'm going to knuckle fuck your cocksucker. You can't call things metal if they aren't metal. Wait a minute. Is that, is that what you're saying? About, that's about where it's going. All right, well, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, in my opinion, I think that the difference between hard rock and metal is subjective. I think it's, yeah, I think it's down to individual. Subjective. I think it's opinion. Yeah. I don't think that there's a, no, there's, there's. Based on tempo. I just wanted to clarify, you tempo. can't be judge metal if they're not metal. So if they're not I, metal, oh no! I think I, I think Judge Metal is a frame of mind, but Judge Rock. Yeah, you can be Judge Rock. Judge, you, judge you can totally be Judge, judge Rock. Rap. I'm judge sorry. Country. I'm sorry. I don't fucking like Nickelback. You know, I don't like judge Nickelback rock. either. All day. I don't like Nickelback either. Went, but they're a rock I band. Went, but I do like certain rock bands. I literally bands. went with this guy, saw Trapped and Chevelle, and Man. then left right before Nickelback played. I would have. I went to work. I would have. You remember Trapped though. People I remember Trapped. They I remember that. Hold on, right, right, before you guys get into this, before you guys get into this angry debate, Shut I gotta ask down. the difference between hard rock and metal. Let's ask the the the, 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 angry, the, Gordon. the, the, the angry Gordon, and let's ask our guest here, Scott. I like, what what would you say time. the difference, uh, Scott, between hard rock, hard rock, and metal? It's there's really a fine line, honestly. The, yes. Some bands you wouldn't really sit there and be like. Their metal, like you listen when, when I listen to like bands like Ghosts, uh, and people are sitting there Ghost, calling it. Yeah. I, I, I see why people call it metal, but I don't see why. I also don't see why any like anyone would call it metal. It's really kind of like really classic hard rock to me. Yeah, yeah. I would say uh, I would say Ghosts would be classic hard rock. See, but, I, feel, but I feel like some of the metal or some of the metal labels though, like hair metal. Yeah. Now to us is considered classic rock. But See, like, that's what I'm saying. That's genre, why I think it's subjective. But the genre is hair metal. But Ghost has a real sound that kind of sound, reminds me of like Black Sabbath and, and things back in the 70s. I mean, that's what it's supposed to sound like. So I guess I can see why people are like, yeah. It's metal. Yeah. I wouldn't define it. See, as I've, seen, I've seen Black Sabbath live and I fell in love with it. Seeing it live. And of course, you know, I love it just growing up with the roots in metal. Like the sword. Family. The sword. But would you, you, know? would, you not call, would you not call the sword... Metal or Black Sabbath metal? That's that's where bands. it gets into the real fine line. No, that's you know, I mean, for 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 what it for what it was in its day, that was metal. It's still dude, it's, it's still, still, metal, still metal, metal, dude. Metal that end last that, that that last like minute of War Pigs, that 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 riff, that sound, definitely. That, that, oh that, man, that rhythm. You're that never line, gonna you're never gonna tell me that's not metal. That line you're Long talking about, about, it's all it, it's all consistent tempo. I mean, I would even go as far as say like Motley Crue. God damn it, that's a tough one. They're metal. Motley Crue. I mean, it it starts out heavy as fuck and it goes into the normal shit, but they, they, I mean, that that was hair metal. Motley Crue is metal as fuck, man. Motley Crue is metal as fuck. I think the difference between metal and hard rock is HCDC to Black Sabbath. You know, I think uh, if you ask the people in the crowd, it's about maybe three drinks and like is, you know. A is ACDC hard rock? Like, I guess so. Rock oh yeah, AC. Like, uh, that, that I guess that AC, makes sense. You keep ACDC out of my metal. Okay, that's that's a fair assessment. Yeah, I actually I'm destroyed. I don't know, man. I'm I'm okay. destroyed. I'm on the side. I'm on the side that ACDC may be metal. No, I, I'm not a huge they, fan of ACDC. They are oh, they're man. arena rock. Arena mm. rock. They got a lot of chance, you know. I think it was more or less they're like we're tapping into genres, and it's hard on me. I mean, it is, but at the same time, like a lot of their songs, when you get right down to it, are are pretty much the same. Mm. It's kind of like Kiss. Kiss is arena rock. They look. Oh, see, you've got me because you just made me. You just made me have a judgmental statement because I don't. I don't want to consider. I don't want to consider Kiss metal. That's what I just said. They're, <laughs> I they're, they're arena rock. Like immediately when you said it, I was like, Kiss is metal. I was like, 
No, no, I my said, belly started I said hurting. Kiss <gasps> looks I, Oh, metal. man, I hate to feel like, that way. If you <laughs> look at Kiss, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, they look metal. And then you hear them, and you're like, this is the most... I know I've rambled on heard. so much about, like, hey, you know, like, let's be non-judgmental. And the non-judgmental <laughs> mission statement is, but goddamn, sometimes it's <laughs> you get so mad. No, look, we were talking about it the other day. Me and Gordon were talking about when we were coming up with the idea for judgmental minis. And we said... I, we said flat out, we were talking, I was like, God damn, you listen to Machine Head, the more things change this week, right, right Nick? Right. I turned him on to this record, this is an album before Machine Head's Burning Red, which a lot of the people in our generation grew up listening to. I the album before that was more thrash and groove metal, man, didn't have that new metal sound, it's one of my personal favorite records until The Blackening came out. And I've loved the Machine, I love Machine Head, I think the last few records have been fucking excellent. But then they came out with that song recently. Is there anybody out there? Is that it, Gordon? Right? That's that one? Oh, no. Oh, my oh. God, dude. Judgmental as fuck, dude. It, it, like, it's just garbage. It's not a good song. Like, it's just like all of a sudden Machine Head just released this song out of nowhere that just, it's just, it's just not good. I, I, I don't understand it. Uh, it. It sounds exactly like the era that they seem to try to be escaping. I, and, and when I try to hear this, I want to I open my head up and I want to be eased on it and I want to go, hey, Let's be non-judgmental, man, because there's something to like in here. And there's nothing to fucking like in there. It's okay. not good. I'm going to check it out. From a I, I see a five-finger death punch and toe headline tour in their future. Shut, shut up. Quit saying yeah, such things, know. man. <laughs> Why you got to say shit like that? You got to fucking crap on it. Rob Flynn had a bad day. He had a bad day. He had a bad day. He lost a bet, you okay? You like songs like that. <laughs> he lost the bet. Okay. You know, that's what it is, man. He didn't need all the cake. He didn't need all the cake. Well, whatever it is, Rob, we hope you get better soon. When we came in here today, man, we, we, we kind of had a, a game plan going going into what we were looking for, but all that got thrown out the window when we found out that our buddy Scott here had recently attended the Summer Slaughter Tour. Uh, I'm going to let him take it away and tell us about what kind of bands we got on that after the break. But what if your neighbor comes outside of the house there? <laughs> Welcome back to Don Joe's Metal. Appreciate that, Angry Gordon. All right, so we're back. Getting intros. Yeah, exactly. God, you were always talking to me. Always people. talking to everybody. <laughs> Nobody knows that we're faking this shit. Uh, so, um, recently, the Summer Slaughter Tour has been running around. Uh, you can check the tour dates online. Uh, I did. I think the last one is the 26th of this month in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And if there is any way that the divines will let me check that out, I, I, I'm, I may possible. So let's see how things go. But our buddy Scott here just recently got back. What I mean, three days removed from seeing this, uh, and uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about it, man. Just the bands that were on it, your experience there. Uh, what was it like? Oh, I mean, it was fun. It was like eight hours all together, I think, eight, seven, or eight hours, and they had ten bands. One of them, Slaughter to Prevail, didn't show up. I think they were stuck in Russia for something. Uh, it was Black Dahlia Murder. They were playing their album Nocturnal in its entirety, and they even played a new one. Solid the new record. record. Yeah, Solid record. That's a, they played it so great, dude. It was so, so epic. Start to finish. From start to finish. Yeah. All right. Well, I got there just before Lorna Shore. They're a relatively new deathcore band. Uh, they just had a new album come out not super long ago. It's a Flesh Coffin. Really good album. If you like symphonic death metal, really good album. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, they were really good. I, I checked out some, like, live videos before I actually went. I heard that they, like, mess up sometimes, like you can hear it sometimes. But they didn't mess up, dude. It was, like, spot on. It was just great. And then uh, after them, it was Betraying the Martyrs. And I only caught like half of their set. I'm not a, a huge fan of theirs. Uh, but they did play really well. Um, and then, let's see, after that... Oceana. Oceana was after that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oce because uh, Slaughter to Prevail didn't show up, so o Oceana came out right after that. Is there any reason they're not showing up right now, or just stuff going on with them? To, uh, what slaughter to prevail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were stuck in Russia for like they couldn't get over to the states. Oh they're, yeah, they're yeah. from Russia. Oh, they're from Russia, so yeah. they just got. So yeah, they had a little trouble getting <laughs> to the states. Visas or something. I'm not yeah. sure if they're on the tour yet or not. I'm sure they might be there at some point, 
but they're still having trouble. Like when I was there, they weren't there. No, oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. Middleheads don't like paperwork. Yeah, that's true. I know that when they hand it to me at work, I'm immediately like, this is a fucking uh, metal. Uh, so, so, yeah, and we're all fans of Oceano here, uh, and definitely uh, that Betraying the Martyr, I never really listened to them, and then I was listening to the yeah, cuff. some uh, metal homework. Yeah, yeah, it so. definitely is going to have to be slightly because on the corridor of covers on Sirius Radio, uh, I was listening to it in the car the other day at work. Um, it's just one of those things where I don't connect my media player and immediately listen to my Bluetooth on the on the speakers. And they were covering "Let It Go" from Frozen, and uh, like I was like, "Well, if that's not recognizable, I don't know what it is." And it's just it's it's interesting to me that that would be a song that uh, you know a national act would choose to cover, but. They Still included it, like, on an album, too. Like, that's they awesome. They put that on their album. That's awesome, you know? Just, like... I mean, because the way I hear it, when I heard it, I was just like, I can see little girls in cars across the country, even if it's just a handful, hearing this and automatically, like, getting the seed planted, you know, of how fun metal can be and how that sound can can just resonate and grow. So, you know, if, that, if that's what it takes to build a, a modern generation of more more headbangers than I'm absolutely down with it so uh, not to interrupt you were saying Oceano and Oceano was playing they played a few old ones a couple from Depths which was my personal favorite of today right. so I was like right, right. yeah and uh, they played a lot of the new stuff too and it's all just solid Adam Warren is one of the best live death core vocalists I have ever seen he is just he sounds just like he does on the record dude just oh, no no mm-hmm. difference at sick. all sick. it's so sick cool and to hear that. Yeah, it's a good thing to hear uh, yeah, and uh, Rings of Saturn. Yeah, funny story. Right Hold off on Saturn. it real quick, and uh, I definitely want to hear it. just got the Rings of Saturn on. Yeah, we got to hear about this Rings of Saturn, man. That n- new album dropped last week, and I, I, I brought it in on the show Great. and listened to it this week. And, I, uh, I haven't stopped listening to yeah, it. Yeah, like, you know, so far I've had to replace two cracked windshields in my car. That's how fucking heavy it is. So. Uh, you were saying Rings of Saturn. Oh, yeah, they played a... a Few of the ones on off the new, they played both of the singles that they released off that album. So they played uh, inadequate. Dude, that inadequate man yeah, for yes. for being a single. So great live. Usually you so hear great. single on an album and you think that's going to be one of the like you know yeah. weakest song or one of the most marketable. Skippables. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah, most, that, that's, that's, that's a good one. But that's the most like deep like really spot on song. I feel like. God damn man, the whole album is spot on, but that one is just I don't know something about that song just really just. Pumps me up. Dude. Oh yeah, me too, man. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, pounding that one all week. It's yeah. a banger. They played a few off of that one, Luke Kai in or whatever that uh, album's called. I forget what that one. The one with the, I forgot what the name of the album is, but it was a really good one. It had a senseless massacre, a natural selection. You ever listen to that one? I believe so. I've listened to generally everything they've put out. Like uh, I wouldn't say I was a huge fan of them. For a long time, just because like I, I'm one of those people that enjoys the melody and things a lot, so I wasn't going like strict heavy deathcore for a long time. Mm-hmm. But uh, every time I heard them, I was like, man, there's, this. Is, I mean, it's just so it's it, it's that, got a unique, so, so different. There's something unique to it. Oh yeah. Like uh, when when I think of deathcore, I think of a specific sound, and when I think of when someone's like, oh, I listen to this technical deathcore band, no matter who they are, Rings of Saturn's the name that pops in my head. Oh yeah. Because those guys like they're hitting that deathcore note, but they're also putting like you know they're not they're not falling to the the I guess maybe the standard generic sound of deathcore. Like there's there's definitely something else going on there and. And whatever it is, keep fucking doing Super it. Super technical. Oh yeah, just, uh, yeah. That, I mean, shit. you're a musician, you know, like more so oh, yeah. than me. So I mean, you, you you would be able to hear it. And I think when I let you hear it, you and you you had the. It's precise. Oh, yeah, you know? precise. That's a good word for it. So Rings of Saturn and who else? Let's see. There was Origin. Uh, Origin, Origin is Origin. intense. It's like seeing them live is intense. I don't think I've heard Origin. I haven't really listened to a whole lot of it, but I sat there. I see people like leaving. They're like, "This shit is way too fucking intense." There was walls of death, just people beating the shit out of each other. It was just great. Wow, <laughs> like, it was really intense. intense. So there was something. There, yeah. there was for people just going outside. They're just like, this, "That shit was just too much." <laughs> <laughs> There's some metal homework for you this week, man. We'll be posting that on the Facebook. Yeah, they for just sure. uh, worth, came man. out with a new album not too long ago. I don't. I can't really think of the name of the album, but I listened to a good bit of it. It's very uh. I don't know. It reminds me a lot of like slam metal. It's just constant noise in your ear. Just it's just intense. I don't Question: know. You familiar with like Black Tongue? 
Is yes. it somewhere, like, is it that heavy? Because it felt like, to me, that's some of the heaviest shit. Except it's really fast. Yeah, I was about to say, really, really fast. Black yeah, it's kind of like grindcore, honestly. Like it has a really grindcore. Kind of yeah, like a grindcore. Grind yeah, I haven't listened to any grindcore bands. And really God, really damn, technical tech long. death band. Like, like, maybe like Waking the Cadaver, but a lot more technical. Huh. Yeah, I... And then you were talking about one that I know that I've listened to, man. I, I know they've been around for a long time, and uh, definitely, you know, in, in the age of metal we live in now, there's there's not a lot of mainstream acts anymore. Mm. But we talked about the Faceless. So oh, you got yeah. to see them, man, and I, I am truly fucking jealous. <laughs> they are great. Yeah. I mean, not really much of a stage presence. They didn't really move around a whole lot, but I, mean, I don't think they need to. <laughs> yeah, they don't really need to. The music's just so good. They played uh, the Auto Theas. Autotheist, uh, the whole movement, the one, two, and three, the three part song, that was fucking oh, wow. mm. And uh, they played a few off of uh, Planetary Duality. I was thinking they were going to play that new single they released to announce that they were going to be on Summer Slaughter, but they didn't play it. It was called Black Star. Really good song, really solid song. I imagine those guys would be the kind of guys that were just like, we're going to play the song we want to play. Yeah. They don't give a shit about Mark. Pretty much. Like, they know they're never going to be a Metallica fucking selling out, you know, 50,000 people stadiums. Like, that's not the kind of band that Faceless is. I oh, mean, yeah. Those are guys who are playing the music they enjoy to play. And you can hear it in the songs. Like, it's, oh, yeah. it's technical. It's, it's, I mean, heavy. We use it so much, it's redundant. But, I mean, it's heavy, heavy, heavy. The guitars were so good. Too. Oh, I imagine. Just perfect. It was just great. Yeah. Guilty pleasure on that. <laughs> I'm fucking super jealous. And, uh, yep, there was also Dying Fetus. Oh. Who I, I've seen them twice, uh. man, and so far, the first time I seen them, they were flawless. The second time I seen them, the, 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 the backing vocalist, the guitarist, Mike was turned up so loud it overpowered the, uh, the, the, uh, the vocalist. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, so he was all up there like, like you barely hear him. But the other guy was just like, bah, 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 just like fucking super powered over top of it, and I was like, this isn't how it's supposed to sound. But still, like they they have a lot of fun. You they say dying fetus. Yeah, yeah. They seem to have a lot of fun on stage. Like they seem to really enjoy what they're doing. Like oh yeah, they really good show. Really, really solid show. I yeah. hadn't really listened to them that much before I went and told them. I saw them twice here. Really in town, dude. Here. When they were still. Factory, I don't, I don't even oh, the factory. factory. Yeah, uh, they played down there a couple times, a few times, and uh, I saw them twice of those, man. I saw a bunch of national acts down there. Dope, Six Feet Under. Really? Yeah, you know, I think yeah. Dope's going to be at that. that they are there at the Blue Ridge Rock. Yeah, I saw them down there, too. Yeah. Six Feet Under, we man. We met Dope that night. Yeah, we did. We met Dope. Remember that one guy? We were just like, we were like, you seem nervous. He was just like, yeah, a little bit, man. I'm tired. He was like, and, then, and we were like, but don't worry, we're not going to bum rush you. And then he put his hands up over his face, like to make fake glasses. He was like, "You would hit the guy with glasses, would you? Come on, I got a bum knee." Like he just kept like all of a sudden just started making yeah. every excuse not to hit somebody. And we were like, "We're not going to hit you." And he was like, "I know." And then I think we got stoned with him. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you have a joint? Right the drummer actually. Anytime. The drummer taught me how to play that song. I think it was called maybe Debonair Air" or something. Yeah. Or is it? You know what I'm talking about? I do remember. I do slightly. Anyways, we, t we helped them load up all their stuff and everything, and uh, he taught me how to play that part of the drums. I thought that was pretty good. Cool. They were pretty famous at the time, you know? Yeah, they were, they were getting They're on the Fast and the Furious soundtrack. Oh, my God. So, uh, well, then we don't they need... They made it. That's it. Fast and Furious. Number one, right? The first one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh. back to the Summer Slaughter Tour. Uh, so uh, we were Robert talking faceless. <laughs> yeah, we were talking faceless. Uh, who was the headliner of the Summer Slaughter? Black Dahlia. Black, Black Dahlia. Black Dahlia murder. Playing Nocturne in its entirety. Oh yeah, celebrating oh, ten, ten solid years of that that album, which is great, dude. Ironically, I saw them when that came out, man, and it was fucking killer, man. And to know that like albums that came out in my generation that I saw, and I was like, oh, look, they're playing songs off that new record. And then ten years later, they're fucking going out and playing that record in its entirety for a new group of metalheads. Actually, kind of strikes in the heart, and it's just like, God damn, dude, that's if dude, anything man. speaks the non-judgmental mission, it's that man, like just passing along the glory. Like they're playing that record for all their old school fans up there, but they're playing it for a generation of new metalheads, and that's fucking great. Because they fucking mm -hmm. need it, bro. Dude, they yeah, need they need it. They need to know the classics, man. That's why, like, I've always. Said I was like, man, I feel like really lucky. Angry knows because he grew up right alongside me. We're both the same age, 
we grew up in an era of metal where like we were right between the the Sepultura, Metallica, Slayer, Thrash metal and power metal era of metal, right between the new metal and technical and metalcore era. You know, like so we 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 were hitting it and getting really into it hardcore. You know, while bands like Pantera and them were 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 still kings of the land and Slayer were still tearing it up every day, just as they still are. In the same respect, like. You know, band, bands like In Flames and, and, and the metalcore scene and just, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't even name how many there were, but they were really starting to come to power. And it's like, it's really, like, I feel very grateful that I, I got to experience all that stuff from my youth and let it tie into it. And I think that's what makes me feel non-judgmental most of the time is because I'm able to appreciate that uh, that old school sound along with that, you know, this is so fucking heavy and fast and brutal. I never could have imagined it as a kid, but it's still, you know, everything to me when I hear I it. I kind of feel that way about August Burns Red. I'm gonna be 100. You know, messengers. When I it never thought I liked them. But in 2003, now they, they they got a new album coming out October 8th or some shit. I'm sitting in the car now on the satellite radio. Put that to them. They're they're just they're just planting seed. Yeah, but at the same time, like, like I don't know how to feel about this, and then later on, you're gonna be like, wait. I know, like I heard the seven trumpets. Trumpet. Yeah, it's like the first time she's like, "Hey, that's pretty good." So it's like a slap on the butt, but then later, like they come back and start fondling. And now I'm sucked. I'm sucked in. No, it's yeah. straight just sucking your titties. Yeah, it's right. A on. Nipple rubber. It's a nipple rubber. Who's it's a nipple about? rubber. Oh, it's it's a huh? Yeah, man. Like I never thought I liked them, but they've been popping on the satellite radio lately. And uh, as they continue to pop on there, I, I, I'm like, every time I, I, you know, I get a little bit more. Oh, they're extremely technical and fucking metal as fuck. Blowing off Oceano is not what you think it is. I mean, there's no Van Halen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd I see them on the sidewalk and uh, I was like, yeah, shit, you guys, you, know, you want to smoke a joint? And they're like, hell yeah. And I went back to my car to grab a joint and on my way back, I had seen the guys from Reflections. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Reflections. Reflections. Oh, I don't yeah. believe they're out anymore. That, that, they, that they, to like me, were one metal. of the. They, they were one of the beginnings of when Gent was actually starting to begin. Like these were the guys that were on their way yeah, to being they, able to put their gentleman suits on, but they just never quite made it. But uh, Reflections was definitely a band. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> what happened with them. I, I'm not either, but they were definitely. They just, what happened to Reflections? Uh, they just. Stop touring, and they didn't say whether or not they were going to be stopped being like a studio band or something like that. But they haven't released anything since. That's crazy, man. But yeah. they they said that they're going to stop the whole touring thing. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the, the guitarist is probably starting to work on. I think he's starting to work on it, like his own solo. They had some gem shit, man. Some yeah, shit that on their records the, that were just fucking excellent. The so. color clear that album was really good. Yeah, really yeah. Oh like yeah, that. I remember that. I picked it up when it came out. Yeah, I was listening to them in Misery Signals around the same time. Yeah. All right, so sorry to interrupt I you, angry Oceano. So, I, so you blow off Oceano. Yeah, I've seen them before. Not yet. To go see reflections, yeah. or to go smoke with reflections. Yeah. And those guys were so cool, man. I, that was honestly probably the heaviest fucking shit I'd ever seen, ever live. It was. They were all wearing matching T-shirts. You know, it was. It was they were so just I love when bands do that. a good time on stage. Yeah. It was the heaviest fucking show I've ever seen in my life. They made Oceano look bad. Mm. I'll be honest. Oceano <laughs> was just a bit too heavy for me. It was... What? Uh, what? Oh, hold on. Uh, hey, hey, hey. I need a round of... Uh, whoa. I need a round of booze in the room for Gordon. Boo! A bit too heavy. Like it. I haven't yeah, been listening to Wade's War because it has too much whiny singing in it, but Oceano is too heavy. I'm sorry, man. Do you need me to yeah. hand you? Do you I'm need me to what? give you some well, five finger death punch and thing. bad wolves to tide you over? <laughs> <laughs> How many Oceano records do you have? At least two of them. I, oh. I fucking love that goddamn depth, dude. Lies. Lies, Lies my I'm ass, dude. Ho! Who the fuck has turned you on to almost more metal in your entire life? Nah, we're getting personal. Controversy. You serious? You gonna ask me if I'm lying to you about metal? 
lie. The motherfucker that took you to see Pantera. Chimera. We it's saw Chimera and Arch Chim Enemy together. Chimera. And you can tell me I'm lying about metal. How many people do you know who have seen Swift? Why are you going to run hey, your mouth? Hold on. You, I ain't no hold on how, about it. How is it that you you bring up Chimera and Arch Enemy and don't throw out God Forbid? I was about because to I you turned you on to God Forbid. I thought that was the fucking... Uh, Common knowledge, but I guess not. No, I had to get you that album because you had never heard it. You want to bring up God forbid in your face, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you, I bet you do too, appreciate it because it was killer. Yeah, you met him right before I did because it was at the same show. Run in your mouth. You may meet more people yeah, now, dude. You but guys were there. You, you, yeah, all of us were there. We all were sitting there. The non-judgmental crew, a decade before. Non judgmental came into existence were at that so. show. You remember that? That was the time. You remember we had an argument at that show in the crowd. Corn Angry, and remember? Corn and Pantera. Do you remember this? That was me. You remember this? I'm just going to bring this up because this is sells excellent. sells more records, though, guys. They're just like, they're just better. It's that was a know. quote. Corn yeah. sells more records, so they're just better. In 2002. This, for, this was a young Nick. Learning about metal, and, and, and love metal, but getting into the metal, and getting into the show scene, and he said, "Corn sells more records." Prior so to hearing metal. Cemetery Gates, and he had never and listened to the Pantera because it was too, that's that's too heavy. Gordon. We're sitting it was in a too crowd. heavy for me. We are <laughs> sitting in a crowd of people at Ziggy's in North Carolina. We are sitting outside on the patio between sets after Chimera, waiting for God. Oh, after God forbid, waiting on Chimera. Arc Enemy headline. We're sitting outside and he says this to me. And without hesitation, with not knowing anybody in the crowd of the metal community, I immediately go, Yo! Who the fuck's the best band you ever seen live, dude? And no shit, dude. Half the people out there are like, Banda! Banda! Like, I don't know these fucking people. I remember people. that. Dude, yeah. I don't know these people. I did not engage them that. before this. I wasn't like, hey man, can you say Pantera when I do this just to fuck with this dude? Yeah, no. I never talked to these people. All natural, dude. This is in 2004 when, you know, Pantera had just left us a few years prior and the metal community, like the older heads were still going to these shows and they remember what it was like to see the goddamn Kings of Metal on stage. Because to this day, man, I've seen, I, I mean, I, I'm, I might not be, I'm not the dude who goes to shows 100% constantly, but I've seen every band I've ever truly wanted to see except for Faith No More because God's not real. At that time, I yelled this phrase out in a crowd full of people and they all screamed Pantera. And I remember not feeling, I remember not feeling right that I invested you in that argument. But I remember feeling just like this sense of community wash over me. I just want to know, was it three months or maybe a month and a half later that I do not come to you and tell you that, forgive me, I did not. No, I, 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 yeah, 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 by no means, man. I did not know. But if you have never that. rocked out the Great Southern Trend Kill, True. then you just don't know. To, 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 to hear the display of power, it, it, I mean, it's, it's there. So they were one of the they were one of the best things. Oh, that. But I think I, I like you I gotta listen to live. I live go back to Moscow, it, Moscow, man. Live in Moscow, dude. That live in Moscow is fucking excellent. But back to it. How dare you accuse me of well, anything yeah. non-metal fucking uh, 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 bullshit? I'm not gonna take that from you. Not from you. From other people, I may I may see the point. But Oceana too heavy. Oceana too heavy. Come on. Hey man, listen to this wolf heart. But turn down that Oceana. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. How could hey, you? It's, it's not my thing, man. I it's say, but hey, let let's you. amend that statement. That amend that statement. It was not my thing at that time. Dude, you saying that was too heavy is like me coming on here saying I'm too high. There's no such fucking thing. Yeah. Sorry guys, I can't hang out today. I had too much weed. Sorry, Born of Osiris and volumes. Like yeah, sorry, that. Born of Osiris. I couldn't make it to your show. I mean, my Way knee, too my knee high. was hurting after work. That poor shop was just too good, and I just yeah, that's you good. know what? The that's only good. statement statement from you that would bother me worse than Oceano's too heavy for me would be I quit listening to Chimera because it upset Marth. Ooh. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Brother, I don't want to hear it from you again. Turbul. Non judgmental. I, I just, they're it. not my thing. I just. Man, fine. Members, that I can accept. We can accept. No, no, that's not, I'm not gonna say that's true. 
I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hear that either because you're not gonna tell me that Kamen Rider is the heaviest thing you listen to because you have turned me on to music that's heavier. I can't give you an exact example right now, but you have shared music with me that's heavier than that, and I've shared music with you that's heavier than that. So we're on a Chris Rock. The era band. Oh my God! Right off the bat, you give me an example, and I don't even have to. Just are you the drunk, I'm angry Gordon this week? Than what is up Oceano, with you? I just so you don't like Oceana? That's one thing. That's fine, but don't don't say they're too heavy. Too heavy. I, it's not my oh it's, God! It's too heavy. Get deal with. But like that Dylan Jerk skate plane, dude. Too heavy, dude. What happened? You know what? Oh, we will talk to you next time. This has been non just Metal. Non-Judge Metal. Be sure to share us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.